Good morning, uh, Michael Masserang here again. Uh, today we're on one of our existing projects uh, in the Charlotte market. This is a, a, a unique situation. Uh, this house uh, has uh, some basement waterproofing issues as well as mold. So we were contracted to solve the moisture intrusion issue as well as controlling uh, the moisture downstairs uh, in the basement, putting in a foundation drainage program as well as eradicating the mold issue, treating and removing that mold. Also part of this project uh, will be clearance testing. Uh, the original scope of work was driven by a licensed mold hygienist that did some testing and discovered that the basement floor joists uh, did indeed uh, have a significant amount of mold on the joists. So we'll be cleaning that as well. Uh, this house, uh, of course, is below grade. And whenever you have a house that's constructed below grade beneath the street level, those houses tend to have drainage problems. And this house is 50 years old. There have been some efforts made here to uh, control that surface drainage. Uh, some piping systems here that you'll see uh, along the front and going down the side here. Uh, you can see where the exit line was cut out uh, to discharge the water. Uh, this was uh, done by others before we got here. But you know, this is an old block wall, so you know, most likely this house never had a proper foundation drain to begin with and so you add 50 years of just shrinking and swelling of the soil that uh, that problem uh, creating havoc on the foundation and creating the opportunity for water intrusion uh, this particular uh, house uh, i guess it's about 1400 square feet here and we can see here the guys are working on the liquid sealer. I like to do basement waterproofing a little bit differently than what the franchisees recommend. The franchisees, they like to recommend these silly eight by 10 panels that they'll put over the block walls. Uh, don't, I don't like that very much because moisture tends to build up behind those panels and I've seen mold grow behind those panels. So I like a hybrid solution um, with these types of situations. We do use a, uh, a pipe and gravel system uh, for our basement repair on the foundation drainage. You can see here we do use the uh, pipe wrapped in a geotextile sock and then 18 inches off the ground, we use this FRP material uh, to block the weep holes. Uh, because it's a block wall, water passes through the wall and it passes into our drain system, which is, you see under this rock, uh, that geotextile sock pipe, that's uh, the control mechanism. And the FRP blocks, uh, the weep holes and forces that water down into the drain system and then from the FRP up to the sill plate we'll do two coats of liquid sealer which we're starting to apply today. Um, naturally the floor system is going to be cleaned and we're going to use our uh, our mold remediation process using chemicals that meet Normy and IICRC standards. All of the duct work is going to get wiped down and cleaned. And of course, uh, we're going to bring in a third party licensed mold hygienist air quality specialist to clear the job and we're finished. We're going to make sure that the floor is clean, uh, completely cleaned up, swept up, sanitized uh, for this customer. And one area I really wanted to show, you can see here where uh, some of the wall still hasn't been cleaned yet, but um, you can see where the old liquid sealer is starting to chip and kind of fall away. Uh, the one drawback to liquid sealers, but 
you know, every 15 to 20 years, you can just scrape it clean and apply uh, some new layers of liquid sealer. And this section here, uh, which we're working on today, uh, has never been treated. So all this will be cleaned and treated with two layers. Actually, I'll probably put three layers here of dry lock liquid sealer all the way down through our drainage area. And we decided to do a sump pump on this account. Thought about doing a gravity discharge, but to kind of do an insurance policy, we went ahead and put a half horsepower pump on this install. And uh, we did have the availability of an extra electrical outlet, so we decided to, to upgrade this account to a pump. Um, but just to kind of you know, get clean this place up, so that, you know this uh, homeowner, uh, this is his rental property, and wants to make sure it's safe and clean for the next uh, for the next renter. And so we're working on that today. Should be finished here in the next couple of days uh, with the final product. So, uh, so we'll uh, we'll be happy to share the final final product here. I'm gonna go look at the exit line. This is a good example on this account of how a gravity discharge is possible. And that was kind of my original intent. But again, we upgraded to the pump, which shortens the discharge line. If we had chose to do a gravity discharge, we would have had to run the exit line an extra 25 feet, which we could have done and would have worked just fine here but i do like the idea of adding the pump on this one so uh so we went and did so so uh again liquid sealer foundation drainage mold cleaning all under the supervision of the licensed mold and air quality specialist we'll return here in a couple days for the final product so you can see everything all cleaned up uh we certainly appreciate you joining us today and We'll see you again here for stage two. Thank you. Okay, here we are uh, on the last day of work and the guys are finishing up the final stages uh, of the project. And things turned out really nicely on this project. Uh, they've applied the patch to the floor covering up our foundation drainage system. Uh, and you can see here they've applied all the coats of the dry, uh, dry lock uh, liquid wall sealer. And we've applied two coats to the walls. Uh, brightens things up in here uh, and certainly a lot healthier than the panels, which uh, as we shared in the last part of the video, uh, tend to trap moisture behind those panels, creating mold. Uh, the floors have been cleaned and cleared um, by a licensed mold hygienist uh, air quality. We can see here that all of the exterior parts of the ductwork have been treated with fungicide and wiped clean. Uh, uh, actually, it turned out much uh, cleaner than I would have expected. As we can see, a lot of that old staining and uh, uh, dirt, dust, debris that was accumulated over many years had uh, ha has been cleaned and wiped away. Uh, turned out really well. So um, very happy with that. I'd love to have replaced the ductwork, but this is a rental property and that's just simply not in the budget. Um, we've got our sump basin here and you can see here they've applied that cr uh, sac or the sacrete patch and did a neat job here of encapsulating everything uh, inside the concrete patch. Uh, proper uh, four inch patch has been applied. Sometimes you can see these companies uh, will not apply a thick enough patch and you know, our trench is certainly well as deep enough so that we could maintain that four inch threshold. This area really uh, cleaned up nice. There was a lot of um, there was a lot of mold and discoloration in this corner where a lot of water intrusion had come in. Um, you know, this has been cleaned, scrubbed down, and a, and we put, actually put three coats of dry lock here. 
So a very, uh, very different look here. Uh, not does it look good, but this will help to maintain uh, that moisture threshold and keep this uh, basement dry. Uh, the customer uh, is uh, going to run a dehumidifier here in the summer months. Uh, just an aftermarket uh, dehumidifier here is certainly uh, more than enough uh, to run between, uh, let's say, late May, early June, all the way to September here uh, in the North Carolina, Charlotte area. Uh, so uh, certainly no need for that right now. Uh, this basement does have some foundation vents. So actually right now the vents are open and we're allowing that fresh air to come in uh, to dry uh, things out really nicely for us. So, uh, you know, this was kind of a fun, fun project. You know, we were able to, of course, you know, get the mold business, uh, you know, clean the mold, uh, get it cleared and uh, apply that, you know, with a full uh, basement waterproofing solution here. And uh, uh, also the guys uh, cleaned and scrubbed the floors. You can still see where it's drying up here. Did a really nice job, uh, you know, cleaning that up. Uh, still got a little bit of work left here to do uh, before they wrap it up for today, but this was a perfect time to come as we're, you know, finishing up here uh, on this uh, basement waterproofing slash mold remediation combination. And yeah, if you have any questions on basement waterproofing, mold remediation, uh, if you know, structural repairs, replacing joists, rotten floor joists, so forth, hard wall sealers and panels, liquid wall sealers, big, it's a, there's a big difference between the two and the applications of using those. On these old block walls, you should use a liquid sealer because it helps to keep it cleaner, neater, applying that product around utilities is much easier. And just the overall look of this is much better than those silly panels. So uh, we also, uh, on this project, had the option of going with a gravity discharge. Um, the guys chose to uh, put a sump pump here, which actually shortened the exit line. Uh, and it was a little bit easier to install. Uh, you know, we do like to use these little, we call it a bubble pot assembly that you can step on uh, and it won't hurt it. And uh, this simply it made more sense, but you know, we could have caught out another 20, 25 feet, done a gravity discharge. And since there was an electrical outlet right there, we decided to just go ahead and put a pump here, which uh, was, uh, it worked out quite well. So again, uh, uh, we appreciate you joining us today. Uh, for this combined project. And if you have any questions on those, uh, those specialties, we'd appreciate a phone call. You can uh, give us a call at the number at the bottom of your screen or visit our website and you can uh, visit us there. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you, have a great day.